Go ahead and give him worship. Exalt the name of the Lord this morning. Magnify the King of all kings. The Lord of all lords. The one that takes a man from the dunk hill and make him sit amongst princes. The lifter up of our heads. Lift up your voice to him. Lift up your voice to him. Give him worship this morning. Father, we worship you. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. In Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Lift up your voice to him and say, Father. Father. Say it one more time. Say, Father. Father. In the service of this morning, Prosper the works of my hands. Just go ahead and talk to the Lord. Father, prosper the works of my hands. Take me from the valley and move me to the mountain top. I don't like the way we are praying this morning. Father, prosper the works of my hands. Take me from the valley and move me to the mountain top. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, I'd like you to pray for someone close to you and lift up your voice on his behalf and say father, father i pray for this my neighbor the level he is today will be the least he will ever be you will take him higher and you'll prosper him in all his ways pray for him in just one minute the level your son is today will be the least he will ever be in life, in ministry, in career. You will prosper the works of his hands. And you will take him to the very top. Oh, thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. May I speak into the lives of at least 20 persons hearing the sound of my voice. The level you are today will be the least you will ever be. My God will take you from your low levels and move you to the mountain top. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you this morning. We exalt your holy name. Thank you for this privilege. And thank you for this platform. I pray for everyone hearing the sound of my voice. May today mark their turning points. In the service of this morning, 
Speak to us like never before. Save souls, deliver the oppressed, set the captives free, and bless everyone in return. That today will be a day we will never forget. And your name alone be glorified. So it is. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Uh -huh. Before you take your seat, I'd like you to say good morning to your neighbor. And say to him, neighbor, you look prosperous. But look at me very well. Before the service is over, my God will prosper me. And I will take good care of you. You receive that shout loud, amen. Put your hands together for the Lord as you take your seat. I hope you mean it that you'll take care of your neighbor. Because surely God will prosper you. And he will make you a blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 7. Is our prosperity Sunday. And I read from here. It says, For your shame ye shall have double. And for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess the double. Everlasting joy shall be unto them. Let me read it in NLT. NLT says, Instead of shame and dishonor, you will enjoy a double share of honor. Yeah. That amen is weak. Yeah. It didn't stop there. It says, You will possess a double portion of prosperity in your land, yeah. and everlasting joy will be yours. Now, there's something very special about the word double. This is the month of double, double. And today is 2002-2022. Mathematicians <laughs> will tell you that the common factor here is two. 20, you have 2. O2, there is 2. 20, 22, there is 2, 2, 2. May I pray for someone here? Before this month is over, my God will give you double honor. Double joy, double liftings, double blessings, double favor, double prosperity. Receive it in the name of Jesus. And that's why I know that poverty is gone forever. There's a song we used to sing in those days. Bye bye to poverty. Yo. Poverty. Yo. Bye bye to reggae, reggae. Bye bye to reggae, reggae. In the name of Jesus. Bye bye to poverty. Yo. Can we stand and sing that song for just one minute and sing it from the depth of your heart? There's so much power in the world that you speak. Bye bye to poverty. Bye bye to poverty. Bye bye to poverty. Bye bye to reggae. reggae. Can you just pray that prayer in one minute? Say in the name of Jesus, from this day forward, every yoke of poverty around me, around my family, they are broken. Just pray that prayer. Poverty, bye bye to you. 
sickness and disease bye bye to you failure shame and dishonor bye bye to you limitations setbacks disappointments begin to reject them and send them back to, to where they are coming from speak those words as if you believe them thank you everlasting father Jesus name we have declared I have said it again and again you can be born poor it's not your fault but if you die poor it is your fault I mean believe it or not some of us were born poor but we refuse to die poor may I pray for someone here you will not die poor in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Recover your seats. Choristers, you can now take your seat. God bless you. What is prosperity? Prosperity is having enough divine supplies to meet your needs and the needs of others. Let me define it again. I said prosperity is having enough divine supplies to meet your needs and the needs of who? Of others. And that's why I asked you to pray to tell your neighbor that God will so prosper me and then I will do what? I'll take care of you. So if all you have is just enough to meet your needs, you are poor. If all you have is to solve your own problem, only you, 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 me, 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 <laughs> you are poor. May the Lord give you understanding this morning. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, Genesis chapter 12 and verse 2, this is what God says. He says, I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee. And make thy name great. And thou shalt do what? Be a blessing. A blessing. Not until you get to that level. Where you become a blessing to others. You are a poor man. Take this home. So when you see some persons, they just dress up, enter their car, just drive off, and they are feeling good because they, they have one Tokumbo vehicle, and I mean, they're embarrassing everybody. They are poor. <laughs> Amen. So your prayer will be, Father, bless me and make me a blessing. That's your prayer. Bless me and make me a channel of blessing to others. That is when you say you are prospering. And I pray that God will take someone hearing the sound of my voice to that realm. You are that fellow, shout a better amen. amen. Now, some two fundamental facts about prosperity. And please pay attention to this. Prosperity is not a function of your race. Race is R-A-C-E. Race means where you come from. Black race, white race. Okay? It's not a function of your race. It's a function of your connection to the source of prosperity. In Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Romans chapter 10 and verse 12. It says, for there is no difference between the Jew and who? And the Greek. For the same Lord over all 
is rich unto all that call upon him. Stop looking down on yourself. A wise man said, no man can make you feel inferior without your consent. It takes you to accept that you are inferior for someone to make you look inferior. So it's not a function of your race. I am black, you are white. It doesn't mean anything. Listen. I mean, it's also not a function of your location. Some persons think migrating from here to Canada is the solution to their problem. Turn with me to Acts of Apostles chapter 10, 34 to 35. Acts of Apostles 10, 34 to 35. It says, Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation, he that feareth him and walketh righteousness is accepted with him. Every nation. Have you not seen people from Nigeria here sending money to people in America? I do it again and again. It's naira you are earning. They are earning dollars. But your naira is stronger than the dollar of the fellows there that you keep subsidizing them. What does that tell you? When you are connected to your source, God has the power to prosper you wherever you find yourself. It's not a bad thing if you have opportunities outside the shores of the country that you want to take advantage of. I've not said you shouldn't take, I mean, you shouldn't, I mean, but I'm saying it is not cast in concrete. It is not nation specific. It's not location specific. It has nothing to do with your race. It is a thing of the mind. There are people in worry that are prospering more than those in Lagos. But they tell you Lagos is a big city. But go there, there are some homeless people in that place. May I pray for someone here? Wherever you find yourself, my God will prosper you. The louder your amen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Because the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9, Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 9 says something. It says, moreover, the profit of the earth, of where? Is for who? How many? The profit of the earth. People sit here in Nigeria and they are able to take advantage of opportunities outside the country and make money from there. And I'm praying again for someone here. Very, very soon, my God will make you a divine treasurer. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So take note. Prosperity is not a function of your race. It's not a function of your location. It's a function of your connection to the source of prosperity. Number two. God delights in the prosperity of his children. It is God's will that you prosper. It is his will. He enjoys seeing you prosper. So when I see people, you know, who, you know, romance, enjoy being um, pitied because things are not working well with them, they make it look like, you know, they celebrate it. God is, not, God is not excited when he sees any of his children not doing well. In Psalm 35 verse 27, Psalm 35 and verse 27, 
He says, let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had what? Pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God feels good when he sees his children living well. Because a child must resemble his father. If your father is the one that owns the whole world, then what business do you have with poverty? May I pray for you again? By the mercies of the Lord. Every romance with poverty, the Lord will destroy them in your life in the name of Jesus. I said the Lord will destroy them in your life in the name of Jesus. I'll just give you maybe two, three reasons why you must prosper. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. whether you like it or not, you must surely prosper. You, surely prosper. you believe that, shout aloud, amen. amen. Number one, why must you prosper? You need it. Somebody say, I need it. In case you don't need it, I need it. Even God knows that you need it. In Matthew chapter 6, from verse 31 to 32, Matthew chapter 6, 31 to 32, it says, Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that what? Ye have need of what? All these things. He knows you need it. So don't pretend about it. There's nothing to be, you know, pious about or to be holy about. We all need it. You need to look good. You need to appear good. You go for a meeting, people look at you and they address you the way you are dressed. Is that correct? Aha. Uh -huh. And how can you assess these things? You need money. Somebody say money. <laughs> May my God put money in your hands. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand and say, Oh God, I need to prosper. My hands are open. Please prosper me. Turn that to prayers. Oh, please prosper me. Prosper me. Prosper me. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. So you need it, which is why you must prosper. Number two, why must you prosper? Prosperity helps you to live right. It helps you to live right. Look at the prayer that was said in Proverbs chapter 30, verse 7 to 9. Proverbs chapter 30, 7 to 9. It says, two things have I required of thee. Deny me them not before I die. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Now look at verse 9. Lest I be full and deny thee and say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor and do what? And steal and take the name of my God in vain. Listen to this. The reason why some persons tell lies, I'm not giving justification for lying, is because of poverty. Why would somebody come to you and say, Bros, my mother is sick in the hospital. I need 20,000 naira to go and discharge her. 
Meanwhile, the mother is at home. Nothing is wrong with her. Because he has thought, what kind of lie? Well, how can I package this thing so that it can sell? And someone will want to help. I was in Redemption Hall, you know, when I was pastoring that parish. And after the service, a young man just walked in, came to the vestry. A man of God, today's service was very awesome. I was so blessed. But you know, man of God, I'm a missionary. I'm, I'm coming from, uh, I came for administration and now I'm stranded. I don't have money. I need to go back. I looked at this man and it occurred to me that I had met this man before somewhere else where he told this same story. But if you look at him, you know all is not well with him. Brethren, it is not easy to beg. If you have ever begged, you will understand what I'm talking about. You need to arrange the begging in a way that it will fly. And that's a function of poverty. May I pray for someone here? Everything that has turned you, I mean, to something that ordinarily you don't want to be, because things are not working well for you, my God will turn the tides in your favor. In the name of Jesus Christ. It's not funny. But I pray that someone, God will intervene for someone here today. Have you not heard someone going to steal meat from his neighbor's pot? It happens. Why would a right-thinking person go and steal meat? Poverty. You can't see a man who is, <laughs> who is prosperous. <laughs> I mean, going to do that kind of thing. So prosperity helps you to live right. And similar to that, prosperity also gives you freedom. From Igbese. Some persons have high blood pressure today. It's not because they have it in their family. It is because of situation around them. So poverty comes with so many things. Sickness. Disease, no peace of mind. When you hear a knock on your door, you, you, your, your creditors have come. I have witnessed it. I'm not telling you what I mean. We've been in the house. And some persons came and they said uh, they needed to see my father. And then you'll see the man running health askers. Sometimes you'll go and hide. It's not funny. Because Proverbs chapter 22 verse 7, Proverbs 22 verse 7 says, the rich ruleth over the poor. And the borrower is what? Servant to the lender. That's, that's what it is. So you live a life of servitude for as long as you are in this state. But I pray for someone here today. Every yoke of poverty, everything that has put you in a state of servitude, my God breaks them today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then I'll take one more before we wrap up in this first service. Why must you prosper? You need to prosper so that you can have a voice.
poverty shuts you out. Even when you know the things to say, and you even say them, nobody takes it seriously. Because it's coming from the mouth of a poor man. Even as some men who are here, if you don't have money in your pocket, uh, tell your wife anything. As you are talking, she's walking away. All he does is to talk, 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 talk. Bring money now, nothing. So you don't have a voice. You don't have a voice. See what the Bible says about a poor man who has no voice. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, 14 to 16. Give it to me in King James Version and give it to me in NLT. Ecclesiastes 9, 14 to 16. Ecclesiastes 9, 14 to 16. It says, there was a little city and few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it and built great bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. Look at it in NLT. It says, there was a small town with only a few people, and a great king came with his army and besieged it. A poor wise man knew how to save the town, and so it was rescued. But afterwards, no one thought to do what? To thank him. So even though wisdom is better than strength, those who are wise will be despised if they are poor. What they say will not be appreciated for long. So even with your wisdom, poverty will still shut you out. So poverty is something you must be angry with. Because it takes from you every good thing that the Lord has put inside and makes it look ordinary. Stand on your feet. Father, I refuse to be poor. Go ahead and turn that to prayers. Oh, my Father and my God. Every romance with poverty. I break myself loose this morning and in this service. I will not die poor. I will not remain at this level anymore. Father, bring me out of poverty. Bring me out of poverty. Please pray that prayer with everything inside of you. Cry to the Lord this morning. Thank you, everlasting Father. 
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. What must I do to get out of poverty? Number one, change your mindset. What did I say? As a man thinketh in his heart, there's nothing you're passing through today that is new. Nothing. I've experienced poverty, so I know what I'm talking about. But I made up my mind at some point that no way I will not remain like this. Change your mindset. Tell your neighbor, change your mindset. Change your mindset. Tell yourself, I can make it. It doesn't matter what is happening around me. It doesn't matter what's happening in Nigeria. I can make it. Because silver and gold belongs to my God. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. So first things first, work on your mind. Tell yourself it is possible to come out of poverty. I hear people say, uh, now which? Listen. Listen. The only thing that can stop you from prospering in life is you. Is you. I said it before, no man can make you feel inferior without your consent. So you need to change your mindset. You need to believe that it is possible. Because the Bible says he's the one that takes First Samuel chapter 2 and verse 8. He said he takes the poor. He raised up the poor out of the dust and lifted up the beggar from the dung hill. To set them amongst princes and to make them inherit the throne of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's. And he has set the world upon them. And that brings me to the second point. Stay connected to the source of prosperity. Stay connected to him. You know the way you glue, I mean you are glued to something. You can't be living, staying in the house of a rich man. Listen, when I, when I finish my youth service, and that's how I, I need to explain staying connected to something. I finished my youth service. I had no job. I needed to get a job. I had an uncle in Lagos that was doing so well. But I had two options. Either to stay with this uncle, live with him, or Go to somewhere else, a four-bedroom apartment where some young persons are staying that my uncle had provided for them. So what he does, he sends them money, he sends them food every time, so they just live well, they have their time, they can do whatever they like to do. But staying in the house of this man, you know what I do? Every morning, I wake up in the morning, I wash the cars, get everything done, but I choose to stay there. Because I knew what was there for me. Sometimes, on a weekend, you will see bank MDs, CEOs, they come and visit him. I said, this is where to stay. Even if I have to walk, I mean, round the clock. It was the connection. That is what it means to stay connected to the source of prosperity. A lot of us want to prosper, but we are running away from that connection. And the farther you go, the more it becomes difficult. So this morning, I will give you a chance. You want to reconnect with that source. Wherever you are, come before the altar now. I want to pray with you. You want to reconnect with the source of prosperity. God himself, come before the altar. I need to pray with you quickly. Just come, just come, just come. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come, 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 come. 
cry to him this morning father i've come before you to reconcile and to reconnect with you have mercy on me and give me a second chance please come 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 the lord is calling you The Lord is calling you. front I'd like you to talk to the Lord this morning ask the Lord for mercy ask him for forgiveness let him know you have made up your mind to reconnect with him this morning and ask him to receive you again as his son and as his daughter Thank you, everlasting Father. Everyone in the congregation, please rise on your feet now. Just rise. Rise up wherever you are. Stretch forth your hands towards the altar. And pray a very simple prayer. Father, from now on, prosper the works of my hands. And bring me out of every appearance of poverty. Just bring me out. Make sure you are praying. Father, bless the works of my hands. Make sure you are praying. Father, prosper the works of my hands. Deliver me from every appearance, every relationship with poverty. Thank you, everlasting Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. How do you get out of poverty? Number three, remain standing because I'm about to pray now. I'll just drop this and pray. You can give your way out of poverty. Pay your tithes. Give to the work of God. Give to the less privileged. Sow into the lives of others. Be a blessing to others. They have told us that it will be difficult for us to ever prosper. But we rejected it. And we followed all the principles. And today the story has changed. I pray for someone here, your story will change after today. Father in heaven, 
behold your sons and your daughters standing before you this morning they have made up their minds to reconcile and to reconnect with you I pray my father and my God that you have mercy on them forgive all their sins cleanse them with your blood write their names in the book of life reconnect them to yourself and destroy every yoke of poverty in their lives open new doors to them and take them to their place in destiny from now on when they call upon you please answer them and every grace they need to serve you to the very end release upon them all thank you everlasting father in jesus name we have prayed father all of these your children whose hands are stretched out to you on this very special day of our prosperity service I ask in the name that is above every other name beyond what they can do for themselves please bring everyone here out of poverty in the name of Jesus everyone in this gathering everyone connected to this meeting that is carrying a burden of debt too heavy to handle father you have done it in the past you can do it again because your favor is at work in this meeting bless the works of their hands give them new ideas open new doors to them take them to their place in destiny by the time your children are returning next month for the prosperity service my father and my God may their story let it change for the better in the mighty name of Jesus and I pray that from this assembly you will raise kingdom giants from this assembly you will raise divine treasurers from this assembly you will raise men and women that will lend to nations in the name of Jesus from now on I speak into your lives poverty becomes a stranger to you poverty becomes a stranger in your family poverty becomes a stranger in your neighborhood in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord will do it for you and you will return with your testimonies I pray for anyone here sick in any part of his or her body every consequence of poverty including those that are depressed including those that are going through one challenge or the other my father and my God in this service you are the healer of the broken hearted Heal them all in the name of Jesus. Bring them out of their challenges in the name of Jesus. Every jobless person hearing the sound of my voice, may the Lord open doors for you in the name of Jesus. And before this month is over, you will sing a new song. So shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Who is next online to prosper? Announce to your neighbor. Those of you in front, don't, don't, I mean, follow the counselor. He will take your details and will continue praying for you. Let's put our hands together for them as they evidently. Say, neighbor, I told you before. God will prosper me and I will take care of you. <laughs> you believe that? Shout a loud amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Amen.